This video teaches you how to calculate historical conditional volatility with the GARCH model. I'll teach you how to do it in Python without use of the mouse and with the keyboard. Subscribe to this channel and hit the like button and buy my books. Links in the description below. Let's get into the video. To open Google Chrome, press Windows key 9 or Alt E is an echo, B is in Bravo, N key to get to Google Chrome. Tab over till I get to Garch model. Let's begin. Let's start off by importing the libraries needed to run this code. I'm installing the upgraded version of Arch. Arch stands for Autoregressive Conditional Heteroskedasticity. We're using the generalized autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity model to calculate historical volatility for a stock. And then of course you're, you want to be able to pull data from Yahoo Finance, so I've got PIP install, Wise and Yankee Finance, and then the usual libraries that we often use on this channel. Import NumPy as N is in November, P is in Papa. Import Pandas as P is in Papa, D is in Delta. That's going to allow you to create and manipulate data frames. From Arch, import Arch underscore model. Import Wise and Yankee Finance for Yahoo Finance as Wise and Yankee F is in Foxtrot. We'll import Date Time as D is in Delta, T is in Tango. And then for plotting purposes, to plot things visually, I'm going to import mat plot live decimal pi plot as P's and Papa, L's and Lima, T's and Tango. Press Control Enter to run this code. As you can see, requirements are already satisfied on my device. Arrow down to get to the next line of code. The next cell has several lines of code. And what I'm trying to do here is pull the data in directly from Yahoo Finance, as opposed to going on yahoofinance.com, downloading a comma separated value file, and then re-uploading it. That's less dynamic, it's more work. We wanna use automation to pull the data in. So first I'll create a variable called ticker. I'll set that equal to M is in Mike, A is in Alpha, R is in Romeo, K is in Kilo. That's the ticker symbol I'm using today. This is a micro cap uh, technology stock that historically has been extremely volatile. I'll, I'll create a start date, start underscore date variable. And we'll start with January 1st, 2010. My end date is going to be the date of the recording of this video, February 11th, 2023. Then I'm going to create a data frame called D is in Delta, F is in Foxtrot, and set it equal to Y is in Yankee, F is in Foxtrot, decimal download, with three arguments. The ticker, which I created, I'm going to set start equal to the start underscore date variable that I just created. I'll set end equal to end underscore date. And that's gonna allow me to download the data into Python. Then I'll do the data frame with a list returns. And that's gonna be a variable, set that equal to the data frame, adjusted closing price dot percent underscore change. I want the adjusted closing price because that adjusts for dividends and stock splits. And so it represents a better, it gives us a better idea of the return and risk profile that the investor actually experienced if they held the stock over the time period, as opposed to just the closing price, which doesn't adjust for dividend stock split, splits and, and these kind of things. And then I'll create a variable returns equals data frame with the returns list. And I wanna drop the NAs so that this works better. So I'll do dot decimal drop, N is in November, A is in alpha, with an empty tu uh, tuple, no arguments in this tuple. Uh, let's run that, control enter. 
and you can see it worked correctly. I'm not showing the returns today because I don't necessarily need to see them. And I don't necessarily need to see the adjusted closing prices, but the check mark indicates to me that this works. I'm going to start building the GARCH model, create a variable called model and set it equal to arch underscore model with five arguments. The returns argument that, that we just created, mean I'm going to set that to zero. The vol is going to be equal to GARCH because I want the generalized autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity model. Then set P as in Papa and Q as in KDEC both equal to one. Finally, I'll create another variable called results. Set that equal to model.fit with an empty tuple, no arg arguments in it, so that I can fit the data well. Control enter to run that. And you can see the result. It worked, but this isn't, to me, super helpful. It's not really visually appealing. It's not super easy to understand what's going on here. Uh, so let's summarize the results. I can summarize the results by just printing empty tuple results decimal summary with another empty tuple in it. So in other words, results decimal summary with an empty tuple is the argument. And now I have some results. This is a little bit more helpful than what we just saw. We can see the R squared and adjusted R squared test statistics, log likelihood. We can see that it's a GARCH model. We can see that I ran it on February 11th and, and so forth. It's a zero mean model. The, deep, the dependent variable is the returns within the model. And so this is a bit more helpful and we can see the, the alphas and betas and so forth. But even, even this is a little bit challenging for some people to understand. Uh, so let's see if we can go further and display the data another way. Let's plot the results. I'm gonna set results decimal plot, which is a variable equal to results, and then I'm just going to have results decimal plot with an empty tuple. I press control enter. And finally, we can see the results visually. So we can see the, the standardized residuals for the company. I believe I used the ticker symbol M as in Mike A. Yeah, M as in Mike A is in Alpha, R is in Romeo, K is in Kilo. This is a micro cap uh, tech stock ticker. It's extraordinarily volatile, or it has been historically. So you can see for daily log returns, volatility actually spiked back in 2008. It spikes again in about 2013. And then it, during COVID, you know, March, 2020, there's a huge spike. And then in 2022, it had its largest spike ever for, not ever, but for this time period, over 40% standard deviation, conditional volatility in a single trading day. That's extraordinarily risky. There, this is an illiquid micro cap stock, but I just, I chose the stock to show you how volatile single names can be, particularly in the over-the-counter market where you're dealing with some of these micro-cap uh, securities. It's worth noting that sometimes th these securities are thinly traded, and so covariance calculations may be imprecise. So that, you know, how reliable is this data? I'll leave that up to you to decide. But But now you have a better understanding of how to show historical conditional volatility with the generalized autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity model. Take this knowledge into the marketplace to be a better investor, better analyst, and a better writer of Python code.
Have a phenomenal day. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, leave a comment below, and please buy my books. The links to those will be in the description of this video.